In this video, we will look at guiding principles for visualizing data using three of the most commonly used charts. The bar chart, the line chart, and the pie chart. We are going to look at the different ways you can use these charts to communicate different aspects of your data. Let's begin by looking at design principles for creating a bar chart. For the examples in this video, we are going to use data from a small online store that sells clothing. Let's look at their sales from quarter one. Last year, the store sold 100 items, and this year it sold 200 items. Let's plot these two values, 100 and 200, on a bar chart. In a bar chart, the values are measured using the height of the bars, and the bars are always on the same scale. Here, the second bar is twice as high as the first bar. And it doesn't matter how large or small the chart is, the bars are always drawn to scale. And to keep everything on the same scale, a bar chart's numeric axis should always begin with zero. In this chart, the axis begins with zero. If we compare it to a chart where the axis begins with 50, we lose the ability to accurately compare the two data points. Here 100 is incorrectly displayed as one third of 200. Now suppose our clothing store sells three categories of clothing, casual, athletic, and jackets. We can compare the number of sales from each category. In this bar chart, one axis is quantitative. This means that it is numeric. It is something that can be measured. In the second axis, the data type is categorical. These are categories, they are not numbers, and they don't have a natural order, which means that we can sort them any way that we want to. We could sort them alphabetically, or we could sort them by values from low to high. Let's look at another example and take our jackets and look at their sales for an entire year, broken down by month. The vertical axis is hidden because we have data labels on the bars, However, it is quantitative. In the horizontal axis, the data type is described as ordinal. These are months and they have a natural order. So the month of March always falls between February and April. Ordinal axis is usually reported in that natural order. So here we have January, February, March, all the way until December. However, on a bar chart, we do have some flexibility. Let's say that we wanted to see which months had the higher sales and which month had the lowest sales. We can treat this ordinal data type as categorical and sort the bars from high to low. A bar chart can be displayed with vertical columns or with horizontal rows. Bar charts always have one axis that is quantitative and a second axis that is either categorical or as we saw in the last example with the months, it could be ordinal and ordinal could be months or years or days of the week and so forth. Bar charts are great when you want to show precise values because there's usually room to put the data labels directly on the bars. So our main takeaway about the bar chart is that it is used to compare values using the height of the bars and the emphasis is on volume or size such as your sales volume as shown here. Let's now look at best practices when it comes to creating a line chart. For our example, we are going to look at the athletic line of a store that sells clothing and plot their sales by quarter. As you can see, a line chart has data points that are connected together by a line. A line chart emphasizes direction, as in this example where we can see that the sales are declining quarter by quarter. And in a line chart, the height of each data point, which is what is being plotted, is actually of lesser importance than the movement and direction of the line itself. In a line chart, one axis is always quantitative, as shown here with the number of items sold, and one axis is always ordinal, and it usually shows the data over time. So here we have quarter one, two, three, and four of the year. We could also show years or months or days of the week. All these data types are ordinal because they have a natural order. And unlike a bar chart, on a line chart, an ordinal axis cannot be sorted out of order. Think of a line chart as a timeline 
and there is no time travel allowed on the timeline. And so if we have a chart that's plotting data for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we cannot take the data point for Wednesday and move it before Tuesday because the data did not occur in this order. A line chart is often used to identify patterns and trends. Here when we have the data for one year, we can see that the sales are declining. So let's look at this data for three years and bring in the two previous years as well. There is an obvious pattern where each year the sales start off higher and then decline quarter by quarter. But at the beginning of the year, the sales then rebound again in January. So this data is for athletic clothing, and it may be that at the beginning of each year, people are making their New Year's resolutions. They want to buy workout clothes in order to start an exercise routine. I think it will be helpful to compare a line chart to a bar chart in order to see the differences. So if we take these same data points and plot them on both a bar chart and a line chart, the bar chart compares each value to the other values using the height of each bar. For this reason, a bar chart's quantitative axis always begins at zero. In contrast, a line chart emphasizes movement and direction. And here, this chart does begin with zero. However, that is not a requirement for a line chart. In this example, our sales are in the 100s, and so it's pretty easy to see the movement of the data points. However, if we look at a larger store where the sales are in the thousands, this chart where the quantitative axis begins with zero, it's difficult to see if there is any real movement in the data points. If we take the same data and begin the quantitative axis at 10,000, we can now more clearly see the direction of the data. And of course, if you do this, you want to zoom in on the data points, make sure that you do print the axis so that it's obvious to your reader that it does not start at zero. So far, we've looked at charts containing one line, a chart with up to three or four lines can allow for further analysis. However, it can get a little bit messy if you have six or more lines. And so whenever possible, I try to have no more than probably four lines on a line chart. And if it is important to see the precise values, those can be added as data labels. So to recap, a line chart shows data over time and it emphasizes movement and direction. Let's look at some guiding principles for designing a pie chart. This table shows the contribution of each category of clothing to the total sales, and it does that using a percentage. A pie chart is used to show parts in relation to the whole. The entire circle represents 100%, and each category is shown as a slice of the pie. So for example, casual clothing takes up 45% of the circle. The data labels for pie charts are usually displayed with percentages. However, sometimes you may want to put the actual numbers, the absolute values on the pie chart instead. This can be kind of confusing because the circle does represent 100%. And so it's a good idea if you have room to also include the percentages. And you can add data labels to a pie chart either directly on the chart or as data labels off to the side. The data for a pie chart can be shown for categorical data, as shown here, where we have our three categories, casual clothing, athletic clothing, and jackets. And it can be used to report a data type that is ordinal, such as quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. When it comes to designing a pie chart, it's helpful to understand how people usually read a chart. They usually begin at the top of the chart, which is called the 12 o'clock position, and they continue to read around the pie chart in a clockwise order. The slices of the pie should be placed in an order that makes sense. Here, the quarters are shown in order, quarter one, two, three, four, but they could be placed in a different order if you want to emphasize a certain quarter, for example. So let's look at another example. In this chart, the largest slice of the pie begins at the 12 o'clock position, followed by the next largest slice and the next largest. But we could also sort the data in alphabetical order if that's how people are used to seeing these categories. I think one of the most effective uses of a pie chart is to use two pie charts side by side. So let's look at an, an example of that. So far, we've looked at 
the number of items sold as a percentage of the total. Let's also now look at the profits that were generated by each category as a percentage of the total profits. Here we can see that the number of jackets sold make up 24% of the total sales. However, jackets contribute to 48%, almost half of the total profits. This could be due to jackets selling for a higher price than the other two categories. We can show this information about the jackets using two pie charts, one showing the total percent of sales and one with the total percent of profits. The slice of the pie that we want to emphasize jackets is highlighted. We can further emphasize this by placing jackets as the first slice of each pie chart. When you show two pie charts together side by side, the categories should be displayed in the same order on both charts as they are here. Pie chart is used to compare parts of a whole. So the casual clothing, the 45% slice, is compared to the other two slices, as well as being compared to the entire circle because it takes up 45% of the entire circle. To summarize what we talked about, we looked at some guiding principles for designing three types of charts, the bar chart, the line chart, and the pie chart. Bar charts are used to compare data points using the height of the bars, for example, comparing the volume of sales year over year. Line charts emphasize movement and direction. They are often used to identify patterns and trends over time. Pie chart shows the contribution of each part to a whole, such as each category's contribution to the total sales. When data analysts are studying a data set, they will often create more than one chart in order to examine different aspects of the same data. I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoy learning about working with data, please consider subscribing to this channel.